Welcome to Proact Toolset Lesson 2, Objectives. Understanding what you want to happen as a result of making a good decision. This lesson covers the O, Objective, in the Proact decision making process. Understanding the result of making a good decision is about identifying what you want, what you need, what you're hoping for, and your goals. The better your objectives, the better your criteria from which to make a decision that counts. And the more objectives you identify, the more alternatives you have from which to make a choice. The lesson consists of this presentation together with a lesson guide to help you define your objectives. In this presentation, we'll discuss why it's important to have decision objectives and then describe a five-step process to help you identify them. Here are three great reasons for defining your decision objectives. The first is that they help you to determine the information you require to make your decision. For instance, while deciding whether to rent out a room in your house, you realise that you want the house to yourself during the weekends. Armed with this objective, you Google weekday lodgers to find out whether such tenants exist. The second reason for defining your decision objectives is that they help you to explain your choice to others. Imagine that your boss has asked you to find a company to help with some printing. Having identified all of the decision objectives, you're better able to explain to her how you reached your decision to select a particular printer. The third reason is that by identifying the decision objectives, you're able to determine the decision's importance and its consequences, so that you know how much time and effort to spend on making it. For example, it won't take you too much time and effort to decide whether or not to cancel your six monthly dental checkup in order to attend a job interview. However, deciding whether or not to take a year off to do some overseas voluntary work will require more time and effort. Here's the five step process to help you identify your decision objectives. Step one, identify the concerns your decision will address. This step involves finding as many answers as you can to the following questions. What are the best things that I want to happen? What do I want to avoid happening? Spend as much time as you need to write down as many answers as you can. If you won't be making this decision on your own, for example your partner will be making the decision with you, get them to write down their answers separately to avoid influencing each other's thoughts and then compare them. If your decision involves something that you've not done before or have no experience of, for instance renovating an old property or running your own business, it's a good idea to talk to someone you know who does have experience or conduct some research so that your answers to the questions are informed ones. Step 2. Create concise objectives. In this step, you take each item on your list and convert it into a concise objective. The way to do this is to use short phrases. For example, the answer to what's the best thing I want to happen, I'm working in a job that I really enjoy, becomes enjoy my job. Here's another involving an answer to the question, what do I want to avoid happening? I want to avoid spending too much on decorating the living room, becomes keep living room decoration costs low. Having concise objectives will help you with the third step, which is to identify what are called fundamental objectives. Step 3. Identify your fundamental objectives. There are two kinds of objective that you need to be aware of, means objectives and fundamental objectives. A means objective is a way of achieving your fundamental objective. Imagine you live at home with your parents. Now consider these three objectives. Save a £3,000 deposit, rent an apartment, be independent. The first and second objectives, saving a deposit and renting an apartment, are the means of achieving the third objective, being independent, which is the fundamental objective. The A step in the PROACT process, alternatives, involves identifying alternatives upon which you will base your decision which in turn provides a solution to your decision problem. When identifying alternatives, you want to be sure that these alternatives are based on your fundamental objectives. 
If means objectives are the journey and the fundamental objective is the destination, you want to be sure that the alternative you decide upon is your destination. Review your list of concise objectives to identify your fundamental objectives. Do this using the 5 Y technique, which works like this. Say you have a concise objective that goes to be a qualified fitness instructor. Now, you ask yourself why you want to be a qualified fitness instructor. Your answer is, so that I will be recognized as a professional. You then ask yourself a second why question. Why do you want to be recognized as a professional? Your answer is, so that people will see me as a serious trainer who knows what she's doing and talking about. You then ask a third why. Why do you want people to see you as a serious trainer who knows what she's doing and talking about? You say, so that those people become my clients. The fourth why question is, why do you want clients? You respond by saying, because I want my own fitness and training business. The fifth and final why question is then, why do you want your own fitness and training business? Your response is, because I want to make a living from helping others become healthier and fitter. So the fundamental objective is not to become a qualified fitness instructor, but rather to make a living from helping others become healthier and fitter. Becoming a qualified fitness instructor is a means of achieving this fundamental objective. When using the five whys technique, you won't always need to ask why five times. For instance, the answer to the first why of the objective, I want to be secure, might lead to the answer, because it will make me happy. When you ask why will being secure make you happy, and your response is, it just will, you know that you've reached your fundamental objective. With some of your objectives, asking why five times will help you drill down to the core issue, goal or objective. With other objectives, you'll discover after one or two whys that you're pretty much there when it comes to having a fundamental objective. Having completed this step, you will now have a list of fundamental objectives. Step four, clarify your objectives. If you're clear about what it is you want, you're more likely to get it. This fourth step is about being specific about what it is you want. Look through your list of fundamental objectives and check to see if you can make any of them more specific. Take for example, to be wealthier. What specifically does being wealthier involve? Are we talking financial wealth, spiritual wealth or a combination of both? If a fundamental objective is to keep monthly outgoings low, it would help later when deciding upon the best alternative to know the amount of money that we shouldn't exceed. If our fundamental objective is a destination, providing clarification helps us know that we've arrived. Step 5. Test your objectives. This final step involves checking to see whether your list of fundamental objectives, when met, will provide you with a satisfying solution to your problem. There are two ways of testing whether your fundamental objectives satisfy your decision problem. The first is to imagine having to justify your decision to someone like your boss, your partner or your friend. If you feel comfortable saying, I made this decision because it will help me achieve the following, and then you list your fundamental objectives, you know that you're comfortable with the objectives you created. The second test is to think of the different kinds of alternatives that pop into your head when you consider a particular objective. Ask yourself whether you would be able to live with any of the alternatives you might choose. For example, when considering the objective to live closer to my aging parents, you find that you're coming up with alternatives that revolve around your job, such as to go part-time, resign, become a freelancer. However, none of these alternatives make you feel comfortable. After some thought, you realise that this fundamental objective is more about having your parents living closer to you rather than the other way around. And so you restate it as to have my aging parents live closer to me. If your objectives either don't inspire you or make you feel uncomfortable, check to see whether you have stated them correctly or have missed something. Like the decision problem, developing fundamental objectives takes time. However, 
the investment you make at this stage will help you to define alternatives that are closely aligned to the solution you desire.